Welcome back, guys. My name is Dimitri Sebastian. And I'm Wes Kendall. And we are back in session where your fitness and lifestyle questions are answered and bro science is put to the test. We've got another fun one here for you today. Um, as you guys may or may not know, I am back in being an adult and working, and uh, I have gone full workaholic. Mm -hmm. All I do is work, sleep, and then I start trying to pull out graphs and stuff to show people in my personal life yeah. um, because I have no personality again. And uh, there's some good carry stuff a with that. Chart finder with you. I do basically. I'll pull yeah. out the laptop and I'm like, "Ooh, look at this! It's called Power BI." For those of you that know that stuff, it's it's the worst. You look like one of those insurance salesmen at Starbucks. Yeah. Um, almost exactly. Yeah. Almost, you know, you ever see those guys that like you go to like the coffee shop, you go to like Cartel or Sip or whatever, and they have like mm -hmm. their laptop and they're like always facing with like, "Look how important I am." Yeah, they're like, click, 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 like, click, 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 click. Doing business things. Business, business, business. Sip, sip, sip. Coffee, yes. coffee, and then they'll like kind of uh, oh, take their phone call a little bit too loud. Yeah, it's that's I'm get I'm on the road. Oh, yeah. I'm on the my my uh, my own internalized shame and my uh, disdain for that type of person is saving me. Yeah. Um, but with that said, uh, I've lost control of my life in other regards. Okay. In that I have now taken on the uh, the I don't eat enough diet. Oh, okay. Where I do, but at the wrong times and the wrong stuff. So like, I wake up in the morning, I have like a go gurt. Right. And that's really just to stave off like a headache or anything. Yes. I don't eat all day, and then I proceed to like cram all of my calories into the end of the day. Right. And warrior diet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's the one meal a day diet. Um, <laughs> warriors used to do it. Spartans. Yeah. The when, Spartans. They, when the Spartans were working on their spreadsheets all day. Yeah. Exactly. But, the, <laughs> but you know, it was we were talking about how, how when does one change diet? What is the, how do you simplify your diet? And I, I told you I'm willing to give away my uh, control. I mm -hmm. don't care anymore. I don't want to think about it. Okay. How do I make my diet as simple as possible? And you actually said that you could do that very easily. Uh, yes, it's simple. It doesn't mean it's fun or enjoyable. Oh, I don't. You know, I yeah, don't do simple. fun. You know, I don't do fun or enjoyment. Those are <laughs> pasha. <laughs> I've said in the past. Uh, I feel like there's two methods of dieting. One is where you just like do the more enjoyable foods, but in small quantities, mm -hmm. and then you're like kind of suffer and be hungry. Yeah. Or you could do the more bland uh filling foods that take up more space and uh those ones are lower calories but it takes more work because you have to cook and eat more and we're talking more about the the space the the ones that take more space and they are lower calorie right yes. now and that's kind of where i'm wet with it too where i was just like it was cute and fun to you know not eat anything all day and then crush like 20 pizza rolls but like mm -hmm. it's just it's not serving because the thing is you want your brain functioning all day you want to mm -hmm. make sure your metabolism is mm -hmm. functioning all day like you know the uh, the blood sugar spikes up and down the moodiness like, it's not really moodiness but right you know you ever have the moment where you're talking and you're the middle of the day and you're like wow i I need to eat something because yes. I'm starting to lose brain power. Like I'm, that's where I'm getting mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. So I do need to just spread it out and be realistic. It kind of makes it so you don't really hit any walls, not only with like being super hungry, but also with that, you know, hunger fatigue as well, you know, because that people even say that it helps or it affects like your decision making. There's a thing in, in uh, the yeah. dieting culture called uh, like, I think it's called when you make a bad decision because you're on low carbs, like yeah. you buy, make like a carb purchase. Carb know? purchase. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you know, you're in a compromised mental state where you make statistically poor decisions when you're like in a very hungry state, especially when you're like depleted of carbs, low yeah. blood sugar. So like a lot of these dieters and bodybuilders will like end up making reckless online purchases when they're dieting and they'll be like, they'll look back after they get food back and they're dieting they're like, why the fuck did I buy like a foot massage chair? It makes you know? perfect sense yeah. it's it, you're i mean what does your brain run off of food yeah it's carbs sugar carbs, actually sugar really yeah. <laughs> so if you got the tank low it starts doing dumb things yeah and for people who even with like the uh that three o'clock crash mm -hmm. after lunch or stuff like that like that's what we're talking about like when you just feel dumb and yeah. people are saying like oh you have this thing that will help you and your initial thought is processed like no i don't want that yeah and it's like mm -hmm. yeah well that's no but this will help and then they have to explain to you and you're sitting there like wow i, I feel like kind of a dummy and that's because you are well, it takes more work, so it's hard to, like, buy into it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because, like, not only do you have to eat, does it work to eat more, but you have to, like, plan more, too. So yeah. I think one framework that a lot of people use to do this is called the six foods that work, and it was popularized by a bodybuilder in the, like, late 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. um, uh, Dave Pulsinella, and he, like, had these videos, and he was, like, one of the first, like, 
uh, you know, Christian Guzman style, like yeah. blog bodybuilders. Like he had a dude following him around with a camera, like while he was in the gym, while he was at home eating, while he was training clients and stuff like that. Yeah. Similar to Christian Guzman. <laughs> the yeah. bloggers, yeah. The, the vloggers as it were, that was, yeah. they existed longer than people think. It's just, they, there was no one following them for a long time. Yeah. Cause they were posting to their own websites mm -hmm. and or it was making like, like CDs or DVDs or something, you know, which is crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> nuts. it's like going on YouTube and seeing a vlogger makes perfect sense to us. The concept of being like, I'm going to go to your personal website or i'm gonna buy your three-pack dvd physical yeah and then watch your vlog it sounds insane yeah no one would ever do that nowadays exactly <laughs> but they existed and they did it yep yeah so he invented what's called the six foods that work and this is usually used for like contest prep dieters com uh physique competitors bodybuilders stuff like that uh, and the six foods in a contest prep prep diet are uh fish white fish uh chicken and egg, egg whites. Those are the three proteins. And the three carbs are sweet potatoes, oats, and rice. Okay, let's pause for a second. Yeah. So fish. You said white fish. So we're not yes. talking salmon. We're talking low fat fish. We're talking like cod, uh, sole, uh, orange roughy, uh, things like that. Okay. Tuna. Tilapia. Tilapia. Okay. Yep. Orange roughy. Where the hell did you come up with that it's one? It's a fancy white fish that people order that, you know, don't care about you know, of depleting fish populations and stuff like okay, that. Okay, fair. There yeah. we go. Dolphin. Yeah. Um, whale. Sharks, you know. <laughs> Blue whale. Only the fins of the sharks. Yeah. The, uh, yeah like okay, that. so okay, I'm, okay, yeah. I'm, picking up, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm going to add shrimp there, too. I'm going to throw shrimp in oh, there. Oh, yeah. Shrimp, yeah. If you don't include shrimp, you're, you're yeah. screwing us. The, so, okay, we're talking low-fat, high-protein Yeah, fish. white fish. Yeah. Okay, and then as far as the chicken goes, are we talking... Chicken, chicken breast or chicken breast. Okay, I was about yeah, to say like a call. dark meat or light meat. You're right, white meat. Okay, so low fat in that as well, and then uh, the other was egg whites. I'm noticing a consistent low fat mm -hmm. concept here. This is for like contest prep dieting. Um, this the one that I'm giving you right now. The, the exact verbatim six Got foods. Got it. Work. But you can adjust off of that. Well, that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Is okay. you know, I feel like you can use that framework, but makes it make it a little bit more flexible because. In my opinion, you only have room when you're prepping foods and when you're eating the same meals every week for about six to eight foods. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, you're wasting way too much time trying to have variety and trying to like mix up your yeah. your food options. And honestly, you're gonna burn out from you know decision fatigue and from doing extra work on recipes that you like can't easily recreate. It and this is a good moment to talk about yeah. the, uh, the 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 sad reality of meal prep is yeah. that you do have to limit yourself because yeah. when you start making fun, we've talked about how every yeah. single day after your meal prep is made, things start to get worse. Oh, they do. It's in, but there are certain things that you can make that are resistant to getting worse, literally in a physical sense. Yes. Like, but the more fun, if you go on Etsy and type in creative meal preps or Pinterest the, or something, or something yeah. and it's, it, it, yeah. it's going to taste amazing day one. Yeah. And they, but they typically don't keep as well. Right. And then you, not only are you getting bored of it, but it's also genuine. The, the, Japanese cabbage you so lovingly yeah. like you know shredded is now starting to welt and things yeah. like that it just doesn't hold up the same the rice is getting dry and then you yeah. also put in you know you gotta remember you have to make it you have to make this happen yeah. and, and clean yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. so it's like you know how much of your Sunday are you willing to dedicate to this it's a, it's a trade off so it's you ask yourself okay if your meal prep's just a sweet potato a yeah. chicken and then a veggie with a low calorie sauce that you enjoy and yeah. that all buffs for you you've just saved yourself you know all that time and it also holds together better right so that's that's kind of the one of those things you have to really consider when you're doing yeah. this i think i feel like everyone starts out you know being super fancy like i'm gonna make mm -hmm. this extra fun you know a nourish bowl with a bunch of nourish you know bowl, that's six different types of grains <laughs> you know and yeah. stuff like that and it's like that's awesome and i'm sure it tastes really good but after two years of eating you know multiple meals a day, four to six meals a day, yeah. and trying to like track your protein intake and everything like that, you're gonna be tired of mixing six different grains in your bowl. Exactly. You're gonna need one grain. <laughs> I actually got to the point yeah. where I finally was like, I I usually try and prep breakfast because yeah. I'm a garbage person who like wakes up with the exact amount of time it takes me to get to oh, work. I love that, me too. And then uh, <laughs> lunch because like, you know, what am I gonna do, make it there? And then uh, dinner, I actually don't prep. Because mm -hmm. that's just, that's like a mental wellness thing for me. That right. makes it so I have not only, I usually have, I know what I'm going to be doing anyways, mm -hmm. but if I want to change my mind and make it work, right. then I can do that. And it's, that's, that's usually where it, it, uh, it really happens. Cause like breakfast, lunch, like it really doesn't need to be, right. it can be, say, cause I'm a soft guy. Like there was like this last week I was doing, uh, it was basically, 
it was some sort of like roll up kind of thing I was doing. Like right. It was like carb, meat, veggie, all wrapped yeah. in like a tortilla, cut in. Great macros. The, uh, and uh, it was just, it was working solid. It kept me going. And then like, but it was all based around like honey mustard. Uh-huh. Like the, the, the real, the real that reason was I was there. That held it together. Exactly. The reason I was able to do it for a whole week, not a single <laughs> complaint. I was just like, we are doing honey mustard this week. Yep. And we live and die by the honey mustard. If the honey oh. mustard wasn't there, I guarantee by Thursday <laughs> I would have been going insane. Well, yeah. I but, mean, that's, that's it right there. It's compromising enough simplicity, but mm-hmm. enough like I can enjoy this that you can make it work exactly the whole week. Exactly. Okay, so back back on track a little bit. Yeah. So we with that now known that this yeah. is p- specifically made for competition prep because yeah. I knew like cause when I was first hearing it, I was just like, wow, like it sounds like my libido is about to go down because <laughs> I have no fats in my diet. Yeah. Um. So on the carb side, you said sweet yeah. potato. Yeah. And I miss rice out. and uh, oats. Oats. So like uh, oatmeal. Yeah. Okay. So. Honestly, honestly, you've talked about this a lot yeah. with carbs, and uh, it's it's your most subtle recommendation you've ever had is that you like the bread, just let it go. Well, if you've 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 I know, and you're a bread eater. You eat bread too. Yeah. I'm aware, but you've you've made it very clear, like sweet potato, rice, and oats. I mean, I wanted to go over. That's the correct answer. That is the contest prep answer. Yes, uh, because bread can cause bloating and water retention, mm-hmm. not because it's going to make you fat. Uh, what? <laughs> yes. Uh, you heard it here first, <laughs> folks. Yes, it won't bread is you. not the enemy. No. Tagline. Send it yeah, to tell feed. tell the news. Tell the news. <laughs> tell everyone. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna condemn Joe Rogan for eating bread. And they're like, he eats bloating substance. I don't know. We got to find every week. There's something new. <laughs> yes. Uh, but basically, for me, my six foods that work right now mm-hmm. are bread. Yes, that's my that's what I eat for carbs in the morning. Okay. Uh, what is it? Potatoes and rice. Those are my three carbs. Yep. And my three meats are steak, chicken, and egg whites. That's pretty much 95% of my diet right there every week. Okay. And then the rest of my diet is fun foods that I have, you know, like on the weekends. Yeah. Or like I'm going to get a breakfast burrito or something like that, you know? We've talked about that. That's accounted for in your life. Like your yeah. life has built around the concept of like you are allowed to do what you want as long as you continue to do what you're supposed to do the rest of the time. Yeah. But basically it's like those six foods are like take up the majority of the meals that I eat and say like I run into a wall and I'm like, you know what? I'm really tired of chicken. I need to switch that for Turkey or I need to switch that for shrimp. Then I'm still only eating six foods, but that one food switched. You know what I mean? Oh, so So that's how I'm using this. This is okay. See, I like this because the six foods that work for you is almost like saying, Hey, this is just what I keep at my hip. Yes. And if this is what works for me. Yes. And it doesn't have to be the same for everybody. Wow, surprising. We keep always coming back to how one size doesn't fit all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's how this whole fitness shit works. And you know? uh, and it's like it's not necessarily a hard six. It could be like eight. It, but like you, yeah. you, you, you catch my it's meaning. It's pretty much six. It's like limiting yourself to a doable amount of work. Exactly. So yeah. if you want to like flex a little bit here and there, like, oh, like I want to have rice, um, Pasta. Uh, pasta. Yeah. 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 Get, like, oh, I have four carbs that I can rotate through. Yeah. It's, it's carbs. They sit in the cabinet. They're not like going yeah. anywhere. Um, I like that you did uh, regular potatoes. Um, I've been reading a lot about regular potatoes recently for some reason. Yeah. And I feel like they've been really like villainized mm-hmm. by the fitness industry because it is like without a doubt. And this so weird, is white rice. Both it's of them. It's the most... It is the most nutritionally complete thing you can really have as a potato. Like if... If you are starving to death, if you mm-hmm. have nothing you can eat, that mm-hmm. you have to pick one food, you should pick potato because it has like all of the micros that you really need, like the vast majority. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a potato with some butter and some milk, like you can actually survive like that. That's why the that's why the Irish potato famine was such a problem. I was about to say that. That's, I think that's <laughs> that like they were like pretty much wiped. Why, out. why didn't they just eat other than potatoes? Like yeah, potatoes were so dope that they didn't need anything else. So it's like yeah. if you can do like a baked potato and you do whatever it is that works for you to make that not taste terrible, or you make like home fries or whatever. Um, let me be real with you. If you're gonna fry them in grease, it's probably already you're on the wrong side of history. <laughs> but yeah, like the, the white rice. Again, yeah. white rice too. Brown rice sucks. Yeah, I hate brown rice. Brown I haven't r- eaten brown rice in like over a year. It's terrible. Yeah. It also it makes me bloated. It sucks. It causes I, people to have digestional issues. It doesn't like white rice. Like you know when I learned it was Chipotle. Yeah, I was doing Chipotle for a really long time. First of all, I learned I don't like Chipotle sour cream. It's gross. Yeah, I mean other people disagree, but that I thought I didn't like Chipotle. It turns out it was sour <laughs> cream. Um, <laughs> then I was like, I you know what. Screw this. I'm doing white rice because, yeah. A, it has citrus on it. That makes it better. Yeah, it's got cilantro lime on it. And right? then I walked out of there, and I got my chipotle, and it was just like it was like a revelation. I was just like, wait, 
And it's like, I don't enjoyable. like the sour cream. And I did the white rice. My stomach doesn't hurt. I'm digesting <laughs> awesome. I feel good. I want to go do things. Like, yep. wh- when did white rice get this bad rap? Uh, well, people, when they started demonizing carbs, started demonizing white rice and mm. regular potatoes because they're like, there's no fiber. It's all starch. You're right. And it's it's like, all fiber. You're right. It is. And But that if you use it that way, and you're not just eating potatoes and just eating white rice, you're eating like some greens with it, or you're eating a protein with it, then that's not a problem. Your blood sugar is not going to go off the charts. Even if you're a diabetic, if you are eating a fiber source with it and have your insulin in check, you'll be all right. It only applies to people who are eating it by themselves. It is incredible to me that we, for years, were just like, fiber will solve all of our problems. (laughs) Because as Americans, we don't get enough fiber. Probably not. We usually don't. But like, let me tell you something. Fiber is not this godsend for carbs because like they always yeah. talk about net carbs uh, that's a trick too. it's like oh yeah well you know it's 10 carbs but i got five grams of fiber so that means it's only five carbs <laughs> no 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 especially the processed uh fiber is well, actually not good quality fiber it's it's like they think that there's like a bouncer in your digestive tract it's like no. it's like the fiber no is the bouncer is like only five of you <laughs> yeah the rest okay. of you go elsewhere yeah you're still you, gonna use it yeah exactly it's just it's just how quickly and it's uh it, and there are there's a lot of like stuff to be considered about how long it takes you to just how long you stay full mm-hmm. disbursement of carbs instead of getting uh insulin shocks and stuff like that yeah i'm sorry your body's still gonna use it it's very good it's your body's smarter than you that's <laughs> it's, why you're supposed to eat meals not just i'm just gonna eat this potato you know I mean, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, well, no, don't, I mean, don't be crazy. Eat. Don't just eat a bag of chips. Eat a meal. You know. I, I have also been yeah. in college, and you get there, and you just look around. And you're like, I'm just gonna eat a potato right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that happens no, too. It's like they're always like talking about being a broke college student. It's like, no, I was a lazy college student. <laughs> it was like you get home, you stab a potato with a fork like 18 times, put it in the microwave. Yeah. And then you know, crush a Dorito into the middle of it and call that dinner. Well, it's not the one foods that work. It's the That's <laughs> exactly the one foods that work. So Dimitri said. <laughs> System. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to the one food that works. It is potato. <laughs> you in Ireland. <laughs> as long as that famine doesn't hit, I'm going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I do like that we've brought this down to reality for a second. Because when you first said it, it was like, I'm kind of sitting there like, this doesn't work. Yeah. But no, it does. Pick yeah. the six things that make sense. Be yeah. realistic. That you can tolerate. They're yeah. whole foods. They're yeah. not coming from a box. Mm-hmm. Pasta comes from a box. I'm sorry, guys. But the yeah. but the uh, they're they're whole foods. There's not a bunch of ingredients behind them. Mm-hmm. Three, maybe four carbs. Three, maybe four proteins. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to kind of like rotate things out if they're not serving you anymore. It's like oh, yeah. chicken. Like for me. I go through chicken kicks. Yeah. I'm told I, I love chicken. And then I wake up one morning and the thought of chicken makes me want to vomit. Right. Same. So that means yeah. that I can just like sub the chicken out and be mm-hmm. like, whoa, we're going to go and bring. Turkey, shrimp, ground, lean ground beef. Exactly. Shit. Put something else in there uh, and experiment with what your body likes and digests better. Uh, one thing uh, my coach said that I thought was really cool is uh, he said, it's not about what you eat, what you can eat. It's what you can digest. <laughs> I have been talking about being yeah. bloated all week <laughs> because it's yeah. like I talked about how like my, so if I eat too much in the middle of the day now, because yeah. I've gotten to this dumb system of my gogurt mm-hmm. gap and uh, it's uh, it's the Dimitri method. So mm-hmm. you, eat, you drink, eat a gogurt and then you fast yeah. and then you, you eat a burrito yeah. <laughs> and I, <laughs> 10 hours later. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing system. It will not, it will not help you lose weight, but it will make you sad. <laughs> and yeah. some people say that sadness is a great way to lose weight. Yes. But, um, um, if At I, some point, yes. <laughs> so now that I'm starting to like get back on the like, okay, we got to really get into a system again. Like, so last week I've been a lot better, like mm-hmm. making sure I have a lunch prep, like something. Mm-hmm. And uh, but if I eat too much, I get bloated immediately. Like, and it's like it's a pretty low threshold now. Right. And it's because I have to retrain my body that like meals come periodically. Oh, well, right. The uh, to expect it, yeah. It, there's certain foods now that like I just can't like really handle right now, mm-hmm. which is kind of. It's it's a blessing and a curse because it's mostly like uh, like fried foods. Like I can't do anything fried right now. Yeah, like I couldn't even. It would I, if I eat like a piece of fried chicken or something, I'm gonna get put down for like you know a couple hours. Right. So you know that's nice because now I, I'm not so driven towards fried food. But it's the same thing with you guys. Like if a food is every time you eat this food, even if you love the taste of it, it's putting you it on your ass. You yeah. 
I, that's not it's, it's not worth it it's not worth it and it comes with the level of like maturity i think when you start to realize that you know it's like yeah we all hit that point where we're like you know is this meal worth it for the rest of my day <laughs> you know if i eat this that is yeah. the <laughs> most adult concept yeah. because, because uh, someone was telling me they have these uh pills it's like uh, no gas or something like that it's like yeah. basically you take it and it prevents you from getting bloated i'm thinking about getting it just for um not so that i can now just crush fried chicken or something but just like yeah. with the knowledge of like oh i'm gonna go to a lunch for like work or with a client yeah. or what have you that's smart eat something different now i can have that so i don't ruin my day great so you kind of that's, that's being an adult it's like taking your heartburn medication before you eat something crazy or anything yeah. like that but your foods in that sick should probably only be foods that like you digest they good. make sense to you like you know if you have a shellfish allergy like don't make freaking shrimp yeah in your in your set yeah <laughs> if you true. hate fish don't put it in your group of six like it's just make it make sense yeah i agree yeah you're completely right on that it's like don't force a food that your body doesn't process well sometimes it takes like a couple days for your body to get used to change you know switching up your foods mm -hmm. especially if you're eating it multiple times a day like just like a dog when you switch a dog's food you got to kind of like you gotta do it yeah you, you like mix half of the new yeah. food into the <laughs> have you been no. doing this recently <laughs> well honestly like when i this is i noticed it recently when i went to hawaii because i did that you know week trip in hawaii mm -hmm. completely ate different in there because if anyone's been to hawaii everything's fried or covered in gravy so yeah. that's just how it is over there <laughs> um but when, when i came back i went right back on my uh uh, six foods and like the first two or three days i was having some serious digestion problems mm -hmm. but then my body's like oh yeah i remember how to do this and then it kind of eased into it fibers kind of that's actually i love that you mentioned that so uh some people who will shift from especially when they're like very unhealthy yeah to a healthy diet your body if you haven't eaten a lot of fiber if you haven't eaten a lot of like whole foods that need to be broken down mm -hmm. because unhealthy food the reason our bodies crave it so much is it's easy to digest it's high yeah. calorie and it goes right through us it's like yeah. it's like injects into our body our stomach bacteria are like oh this is this awesome is perfect yeah. so yeah. when you don't have a lot of um you know a lot of fiber a lot of whole foods your body doesn't have the gut flora to break that down as well mm -hmm. so if you've ever it, it, some people may or may not know about this but if you like never eat salads mm -hmm. and then you just eat salads constantly like you will at first just be shitting leaves it'll be like you'll be have rock hard constipated shits, it, it's, right? it's yeah. the worst you're you're shotgunning yeah. hard leafy poops <laughs> like you're you know like those little things like the uh, the greek food they're like rice wrapped in like leaves. <laughs> yeah like that's basically the great things yeah the grape seed whatever so, there yeah, you are you are shitting out like like bundles of leaves <laughs> because your body is just like, why are you outside eating the front lawn? You idiot. Like we don't know what to do with this. Right. And then give it enough time. It'll be like, oh, okay, we know how to do this. And then you'll start feeling better. And then you actually feel cleaner well, because that's a awesome point. You just brought up because what happens is your body gets used to needing certain levels of enzymes to digest the foods mm -hmm. that you eat. So that's one benefit of eating the same foods over and over is your body's like, oh, I'm going to get, you know four meals of these six foods every day so i need this much amount of protein enzymes and this much amount of carb enzymes yeah and then say you're not doing that you're eating random shit then it doesn't know how much enzymes to make and then all of a sudden you throw in three salads and you need this much uh you know carb enzymes and you have none of it so it's like you you have a terrible time in the bathroom it's an interesting problem we've created for ourselves in america because like let's be real we're we're pretty fat compared to leave to the world and yeah. uh even the rest of the world where it's like you go to europe and it's just like well you guys don't eat that much better than us why are you so much skinnier it's like well they they're we have focused so much on diversity of diet yeah. our bodies can't keep up when you are someone who can on monday eat italian on tuesday eat right. korean on three thursday eat ethiopian yeah like how is your body supposed to keep up with that and like that's yeah. awesome that's wonderful like the, the world is a globalization is here and yeah. i love other cultures i always support that doing those kind of things you should always try new foods it's great for you and you're going to discover things that maybe will fit in your diet even better for you yeah but like when you're able to change it every single day your body is going to be like dude i don't even no that's impossible to track too like how could you track your intake on that too i mean i mean it sounds like you need a team that's the huh. kind of thing that's usually when you hear like about famous people like how did they lose weight in like six months and now they're like rock like the rock hard shredded it's like they have a team they have people Th that or they'll even or they'll admit i ate chicken rice and broccoli they'll, exactly they'll, it'll be one or the other they'll be like i had a fucking team of specialists you know behind me cook trainer if you, you have know, physical the money, if you have the yeah. money for it there are some nutritionists and trainer yeah. teams that are so good they get paid amazing because they can do this and they're like 
I will take you around the world of your dinners for the rest <laughs> of your life, and I will make sure that your gut biome somehow does not is not affected at all. I need that big guy who goes into McDonald's and slaps the burger out of the hand like, I told you not to oh, pee on God, your Oh, God, I love those videos where it's like <laughs> you, you hire them to be like, they, they only come in when you're like going off your diet. Yeah, you're about to eat a burger. <laughs> that, is, that is a guy I actually need. That's, maybe that's just the army having abused me too much, but like I really, I'm very receptive to getting screamed at when I'm doing something wrong. Because if you're nice about it, I'm just going to keep like, I'm going like, to, whatever, I'm going to eat this burger. It's just like, don't, I, I do feel bad about this, Wes. I, I wish I wasn't doing this thing. If you just came and like smacked it out of my hand, I'd be like, what is, oh. like, like, I'd, like, what was I thinking? What was I doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, yes. so how we, we did bring this up be, uh, even before we start recording. So we have the six. Yeah. Which I love already. I love the concept. Yeah. I think it makes dieting very simple. Mm -hmm. And you know, we can talk all for days about in cake and blah, blah, blah. But if it's just those six, it's, it's going to be frankly hard for you to overeat too much yeah. unless you're a complete manimal. It's, how, I don't think you could do it, honestly. How often can you change your diet? Like, or, or should you be changing? Because we just talked about how like our gut biome is trying to like mm -hmm. make things work, you know, and obviously subbing out one or two things from the six is not too bad, not too drastic. But, you know, if we want to change up our diet entirely, like how yeah. much time should we be giving between those? So I think there's two types of changes. And one would be like a preference change, which is like, you know what? I'm really tired of eating ground beef uh, taco bowls. Been I there. want to switch to teriyaki beef and rice bowls. Fair. You know, it's like that's one change. You know, mm -hmm. that's a preference change. And then there's like a digestional change that you'll need. And that's like, you know what? Every time I drink my egg whites or I eat my eggs, I have the worst heartburn and feel like I need to vomit. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. You know, because you're not digesting it right. So I feel like at that point, you just need to sub the food for something else. Okay. So it's almost like you're basically just saying like, hey, just stick to your guns, but only make changes when it's either a mental health thing, which yeah. I know it sounds crazy. Be like mental health. I need to eat different foods. But or it's a like this is straight up not functioning. Well, for that me could anymore. happen every week. Like say you know, this week I want my taco bowl, and then next week I want my teriyaki beef bowl. So it's like change that like every week, and that's in my preference because it's like I don't want to meal prep multi that many times where I'm eating a different yeah. bowl every day. You know. Well, okay. Well, first of all, that's crazy. Yeah. If, you're, if you if you meal prep that, then either you've got again we're talking about staff or you're crazy. Yeah. Um. Now what if I decided. I was just like, and we're not going to get into the diets, but this is just a, a vignette here. I've decided ethically meat is now important to me and I want to be a vegetarian. Yes. But yes. then I realized this is dumb and I hate it and I don't like animals and I think they're ruining the earth and I want to go back to eating meat. How long should I like <laughs> have been a vegetarian before I flip back again and I might be detrimental to myself? Like, because things we've talked about oh, before, yeah, like you shouldn't be like saying. bop, 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 bop. Like what is um, the, what is the time frame? <sighs> I don't think I don't know on honestly if there's like a, a minimum or maximum amount of time, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's just like when you switch the dog on the dog food, it's like I would kind of ease into it gradually, and then also like sometimes you just kind of pull the trigger and be done with it. You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah. I mean, frankly, that sounds kind of uh, like a fair thing to end on. Is uh, yeah, everything in everything in moderation. Do things gradually. If you're being no consistent, cookie cutters. no, there is no cookie cutter. Why do yeah. we keep coming to this conclusion? This is every the worst episode. podcast ever. <laughs> yeah. It always leads to us saying that everyone's different. We just tell you the same thing every week, every single week. You're yeah. all beautiful, <laughs> wonderful snowflakes and each an individual. Yes. And we love you. As yeah. always, you can find us at BNS underscore radio on Instagram, BNS underscore radio on YouTube, like subscribe, comment. It helps us out a ton. Um, you can find us on all the podcasting apps that you follow. You can find me on Instagram at Demetri Sebastian. You can find me double W Kendall underscore MFT and thank you for the questions. Wes is gonna go watch a snake eat a small rodent uh, in our war against the animals because we were trying to be vegetarians and we realized Nature Channel. Nat Geo. Yes. <laughs> this is Circle Life. All right. All right, we'll see you guys next week. All right.